Okay, welcome to the third part of um, this PDO uh, introduction. Um, in the last one, we talked about using bind parameter and then putting in the, your variables inside of here and then here and so on. Obviously, that's still uh, wrong from the last one. Um, let's change that now, shall we? Just to be correct, let's put this back like there, like that. Okay, fine. Okay, so. Um, what about if you don't want to use by and parameter? What about if you want to use another method? Fine, let's get rid of it. Right now, just to show you that we're going to get an error because it's not going to be able to find it. Um, see here, uh, invalid parameter. No parameters were bound because it, it searched through this as it um, had the as it was executed. It searched through and it's found this one variable there, uh, and it doesn't know quite what to do with it because we haven't. Um, binded any parameters. Now, essentially, the best way is to use bind parameter method, but you don't have to. You can just do it in the execute uh, method as well. So we just say here name, and we just populate it with an array, and then we just say uh, David, for example. Right, so we're passing an array into the execute method, uh, ready for this to all be populated now our David arrays up here. Okay, so we're giving this one variable the value of David. Let's just save it. Come to Firefox. And as you can see, works fine. So you have two methods of doing this. One, either bind parameter, as we discussed in the previous tutorial, bind parameter, or then you can pass an array of all of the key value pairs um, into the execute function whichever way you want. Now, what about if uh, you don't want to collect it um, as arrays? So every single um, row that comes out at the moment is being collected um, as an array. Let me just come here. So select everything from as users. Let's get rid of this and so on, just to show you that we have everything and do this. And let's just put a pre in there as well, shall we? So it looks a little bit clearer to show you. Okay, come again. And as you can see. Now so we're gonna get an array anyway of all of the uh, all of all of the data. But every single piece of data is coming back as an array. Now what about if you like me who likes using standard classes rather than arrays? Well we can do that as well. And um, there's some predefined constants which we can use. Now when we say fetch all, we can say which data type we want the data to be collected as. And all we have to do is come inside of here and pass a parameter in. So if you say PDO and then um, and then two colons, and then just say fetch, and you can come come down and see this fetch object. Um, you also saw that it had a number next to it, five, so we could just use five instead. So you, p you pass that, that one argument into fetch all, and now let's refresh the page on Firefox and you can see now rather than having arrays we have standard classes it makes them a lot cleaner because we're not getting all of these other key value pairs that we just simply don't need we're getting the raw column names and value itself I personally like doing it this way I like using standard classes and I like a more object orientated um, programmer rather than using arrays I mean it's huge advantages of using arrays and so on but uh, when it comes to data, I, I like using um, standard classes, um, but each to their own. Now, like I said, um, because this is a, a predefined constant, we could just put 5 in here as well, and it would do exactly the same thing. So we just refresh it, and as you can see, there's essentially the predefined constant of PDO colon colon fetch underscore object uh, is equal to the value of 5. So, And you could see that um, on on NetBeans, you can see it's got the number next to it, 5, so that's the actual value of the predefined constant. Okay, so that's um, fetch all. But you might be asking the question as well, wait a minute, what about if I don't want to fetch all of them, I just want to fetch one of them? You know, if we're saying here, select everything from, not in capitals, from users uh, where uh, user ID, for example, is equal to then uh, user ID, so we're just collecting one um, one person's 
uh, data this time and let's just say bind parameter for the sake of argument to this once again and we'll say user ID equals this one and I know that I put David Dawn in first so it's going to be user ID of one and this time we can see um, about just collecting one object rather than an array of objects. We come back here and as you can see we still get an array with inside of an array. Well I don't want that, I just want it to return this rather than give me a collection of arrays. So rather than using fetch all we could use another method okay, which is then fetch uh, object and by default it's going to um, return a standard class object if we don't pass in any parameters. So if we just come back to here again you'll see we refresh it. Now we're just getting a very very clean standard class return. Therefore if you don't want to collect multiple um, items um, then you just use fetch object. But you need to make certain that your query string that you put through is only returning one. Therefore I would um, kind of advise just saying like limit one exam uh, for, exa for example then you know that you only get one okay now what about if you wanted to then um, ret have it populate another class well if we came up here for example and we just made uh, a quick class of um, let's just say user for example shall we say um, nothing more than user we'll make it and inside of here um, we'll just say then uh, user so we're fetching an object of user okay and let's just refresh this and this time you can see that now we've got a user object okay which is really cool because it means that we can make our entities as such our objects through PHP and then when it extracts the data from the database it the fetch object will instantiate the object and populate all of the properties with all of their values but when we've got a class filled with properties with values that gives us so much more flexibility to do other stuff as well for example we could then just use like getters and setters so we can say um, get for example in here and we could then just do use um, like var in here and say if um, property I spell everything right today property uh, exists and we say this and we'll say then uh, var I'm going to say return this var, okay? Otherwise, would we'll return false, right? So you're kind of making your own custom get function. So now, uh, as we do that, we're getting, uh, we know that we're getting uh, a user object, okay? And what we can do is we can say echo rows and get name instead, all right? So we, as long as you're doing a bit of testing and you know it's going to come back a user object uh, anyway as long as it doesn't return null so now come here refresh it and you can see that with, with rather than with MySQL you, it then comes out then you've got to populate a class well bang done it's populating a class for you and you've then got huge functionality within that one class object I hope that's not too confusing um, I'm going to end this one here and then we'll jump into the next one and go that little bit more deeper um, on what we want to do. Alright, my name is David Thorne, if you didn't know already, um, subscribe, like, thumbs up, um, visit me on Facebook. If you don't know my Facebook page then um, facebook.com forward slash Thorne Design. Um, if you're on YouTube I'm sure you'll find it. Alright, okay, that's it. Thanks very much for watching. See you in the next video tutorial. Bye bye.